on it or we will do it at some point. It's something that you must do. If you are an independent person in this town, in this Lagos, whether you are male or female, as an independent person, you must do it at some point in your life. Yet even while doing this very basic thing, this very basic but very stressful thing, women face an extra obstacle. I'm talking about finding accommodation. Or more, we all need a place to live. And for most Nigerians, this means renting a flat or renting a house. Abby? And renting brings a lot of obstacles for everybody. While I was on leave, I was looking around trying to find a new place to move to because my estate floods a lot. Here in Lagos, you have to bring one year's rent at once, plus agency fee, plus legal fee, plus caution fee, <laughs> and maybe a service charge. In places like Port Harcourt, you even have to bring two years' rent. Two years! But having the money is not the end. The landlady or the landlord has to accept your money. And this doesn't always happen. House owners find so many reasons not to accept a tenant. But there's one reason that so many women, when we spoke to them, have given year after year for why landlords rejected them. They were not married. So today on The Glass Ceiling, let's talk about the discrimination against single women in the house rental industry. I'm supposed to have a guest join me on the phone. She's a journalist. She wrote about this problem a few years ago. Her name is Nana Suleiman. To you as well throughout the show. Are you a woman? We have a special line dedicated to women. So you can call that line. And you can also call all the other numbers that we have. Whether you're male or female. But for mostly women. Are you a woman who has experienced this while looking for a place to stay? Are you a man who has had to help women in your life uh, house hunt? Have you had to pose for anybody as a husband? And then I want to hear from real estate agents as well. Do you hear landlords and landladies say that they don't want single women? What are the reasons that they give? How common is it in your experience? Are you a landlord or a landlady? I want to hear from you as well. Do you have a no single women rule? Why or why not? Did you have certain experiences that, that uh, led you to this policy? Now, we're not here to condemn you as a landlord or as a landlady. We just want to understand. We just want to have a dialogue with you. So please give me a call when the time is right for you to give me a call. But right now, we've got uh, Nana Suleiman on the line. And so let's uh, connect with her. Hello, Nana. Hello. Hi, Nana. Good to have you on the show. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about this article that you wrote. Why did you write it? Well, I had heard a lot of stories from women okay. about how they've been struggling to rent in Nigeria. And I, I thought it was okay before you go on the room you're in is echoey is it possible to change locations okay give me a second okay okay is it any better yes this is better okay so um i was saying that I got a lot of stories from women, and some of them, I knew some of them, and they were just, you know, recounting their experiences to me. And I thought it was a bit odd, so I decided to investigate. I spoke to a lot of people and found out that it actually really happened. So I guess my motivation was just um, hearing stories from women who had experienced this, mm. of being denied rent, for mm. just being women, for being single women. Mm. And that's really how, um, what made me write the article. In, in your research for the article, how many cases did you come across? Um, 
a lot. I think about 70. Um, just for the 70? Because what I did, yeah, so what I did was, um, I spoke to him and then I said, you know what? If you know anybody that has a friend, you can tell them to reach out to me. Mm-hmm. And I also went to social media and I put out the call. I said, if you have a friend, please reach out to me. Okay. And I told you that my messages and my emails were just logged in. Women were sharing that story. Wow. So I counted 70 years on that same day that I took it out. Wow. Um, I, yeah, I can't track the rest. Now, did you, did you talk to any landlords? How many of them admitted to having this no single women police? So I only talk to one landlord, but what I realize is that the landlords usually have um, agents who get people for them. Mm. So they're not the ones actively picking out these people. They have agents who take them to landlords and stuff. Mm. So I talk to agents and I talk to real um, real calls. Okay. So these are the people that actually um, pick out people for the landlords. And, and what I found out was that the way he's saying it, you know, crowd be like, yeah, it's if you're a single woman and you come to me, I'm going to warn you from the start that you're most likely not going to get this house. Because there's already a perception because you're single that you're probably promiscuous or you can't afford this. There's just this discrimination that comes from the fact that you're a woman. And they publicly said, they admitted to me that, yeah, this happens and it's just what you see. Hmm. Hmm. What yeah. reasons did they give for it? The, the agents and the realtors. I mean, they're telling you pump and plain, to use that Nigerian term, that uh, if you're a single woman, let me be honest with you, you're probably not going to get this house. What are the reasons that they gave? Yeah, so there are a lot of reasons. Um, the most common and the most popular one is that um, unmarried or single women are promiscuous. The, the, he said it to me, one of the good persons I talked to, he said, you know what, if you're not married, it means that you must be a prostitute. Because why are you not married? So we can't have a prostitute rent house and rent a place here. Because I'm going to bring a prostitute friend, mm. and she's going to, you know, contaminate in these words. I remember very well, the compound. Okay, so this agent said to you that um, she she's probably a prostitute that will invite her prostitute friends to contaminate exactly. the compound. Okay. And he gave me an example. He said, you know, in the past, I mean, he told me some stories that there have been some women and this is what they did. They brought other women who are prostitutes. Hmm. You know, as they sort of able to back up the story. So that's the first thing. The second assumption from the young landlord I spoke to, he said, you know what, he doesn't think single women can afford women. Okay. So why should they, you know, so why should they, why should they um, accommodate them? And I said, what is their truth, you know, that that these women can afford the two years rent. So they usually lay out um, two years rent at first. Mm. And he said, uh, if, 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 if they true, it's probably from the sugar daddy or the boyfriend or something. Oh. So what I got to observe is that there's already this existing notion or perception that if the woman can afford it, then it, it must not be her money. It must be from another man. Uh, uh. So I found, you know, it's, I will call it patriarchal, the idea that it has to be from a man, even if the woman shows to. Hmm. And if you, uh, if you notice in the story that I wrote, one of the women, you know, got a very good paying job and she, she said to them, you know, I can afford this. And they were like, no, we're not sure you can afford it. Her parents have to come all the way from the uh-uh. You know, she talked to this landlord in Lagos. She said, actually, my daughter works here and she can afford this. You know, before they asked, they even listened to her. So it was like, she wasn't a person. She had to go and bring her parents to say, you know what, she's not lying. She can afford this. So there are these discriminating reasons that either to the prostitute or she can't afford it. Now, now I have to ask, Nana, I have to ask, because there are many people who say uh, single women are not the only ones now. They're not the only group of uh, 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 people that Lagos landlords discriminate against, you know. So some people will mm-hmm. say that uh, some ethnic groups, for instance, also suffer discrimination. Mm-hmm. Some landlords mm-hmm. say that they don't want families because children will damage the house. Others will say that mm-hmm. they don't want young men because they might be doing fraud. So the argument is basically that that why are we focusing on single women when there is a general problem of discrimination in the rental market? You know, this question is very interesting because when you compare the numbers of men, single men being discriminated and single women being discriminated, single women far, far outnumber um, single men being discriminated against. And this is not something I'm just saying off the top of my head. This is something I said clearly. If you go out there and put out a case, mm. more women will come out to see what happens to be than men. 
focus the focus is going to be on where it's more rampant. Nobody is denying that it, you know, it, it doesn't happen to men or it doesn't happen to other ethnic groups. Mm. But people are focusing on the part that is, it, it doesn't happen to other people yet. It doesn't happen to women. It's more substantial on the part of women. Yes, it is. I and mean, we can't, anybody that you know, says that it doesn't happen to more women, it's just the deliberate dishonest. And that is the fact. So while we obviously have to admit that it happens in other cases, it is more rampant, more of an epidemic on the side of women. Mm. And that's just the fact. And you also have to take into consideration that um, women are members of all those groups. Yes, there's discrimination in renting yeah. targeted at various groups, but women are also members of all those groups. So the people yeah. who are from ethnic groups or the people uh, who have children and things like that, women are also targeted by exactly. those other types of discrimination. So if, for instance, you have exactly. some Lagos landlords discriminating a particular tribe, they're discriminating both men and women of that tribe. But exactly. well, the single women of that tribe have an additional discrimination because they exactly. are single women. Now, uh, let exactly. me come to you who's listening at home. Nana, uh, you'll be on the line so you can hear some of the things that my callers will say. I want to hear All from right. you. Are you a woman? Who has experienced this while looking for a place to stay? The landlord no greedy give you house because you no get husband. Are you a man who has had to help the woman in your life? House hunt. Maybe your sister. Maybe your girlfriend. Have you had to pose as a husband? I've had a lot of men tell me when I was researching for this. A lot of men were like, Omo, I had to go with my friend and pose as her husband before she got this house. Are you a real mm. estate agent? I want to hear from you as well. Do you hear landlords and landladies say that they don't want single women? What are the reasons that they give? How common is it in your experience? Are you a landlord or a landlady? Remember I said earlier, we're not going to condemn you. This is not for us to judge you. We want to know why you have a no single women rule. Why do you have it? Why don't you have it if you don't have it? Are there certain experiences that led to this policy? We just want to understand. We want to have a dialogue. Now, women only call this number 01277-0993. Only women call this number 01277-0993. You can also call 01277-1993, 2993, and 3993. Hello, Meg. Welcome. Yes, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, I just want to contribute and uh, add my voice to what the lady has said. Go ahead. It's really true, it's happening. Okay. And uh, most of the time, there's really no basis for it, other than we stereotype everything in Nigeria. Hmm. Because really and truly, being a single woman does not make you irresponsible. There are people who are, who, who are married and they are so irresponsible than a single person who is not married. So it's, it's about time we begin to talk about it so that things can change. Well, for, some, for, certain, for certain landlords, their reason might be that, oh, a single girl will cause traffic in their premises, especially when they stay there. What does that you mean, cause traffic? What? <laughs> 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 traffic men, oh, my darling. Oh, God. Traffic of okay, coming to see the girl. Okay. Hello? Why is this a problem? I don't know for them. Even if, she traffic, exactly. Even if she were to cause traffic, exactly. Even if she were to cause traffic, it's the same thing. We are backwards in Nigeria. Hmm. We are so backwards. Is there any is there any other country where this thing holds water? So long as you have your money, you can rent a house. So long as the, the, your money is not stolen. So hmm. I don't know why hmm. they do it, and they do it all the time, and it's very frustrating. Hmm. I have had friends who are not married who have gone through such issues. Before, it takes people posing as their husbands for them to get the, the, the accommodation mm. in, in truth. Mm. And I'm wondering how long will we continue like this? Mm. There are women who are doing so well in their careers, who earn more than the so-called men they want to, to rent their houses to. <laughs> For me, I don't understand, though. It's mm. sad where we are in 2019. It is, Meg. That this thing is still reoccurring. Mm. Mm. Yes, indeed. Let me talk to Genesis. Meg, thank you so much for calling us. Genesis, hi. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, welcome. Yeah, I want to speak from the landlord point of view. Oh, thank God. Welcome. Yes. You see, we have issues sometimes with uh, single ladies. Okay. Yeah, my, 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 my own experience is uh, one day I ran to a, um, 
I had somebody banging the gate. And uh, because I, because normally if if you if you live in the house, you are very free to come back anytime you want because you pay my bills. Okay. So I mean, I mean, I don't care about that. But in the morning, I asked the gate man who is who was person knocking, and he said um, one of the ladies' girl a boyfriend okay. by two a.m. I mean, for your own angle, is it right? Thing? A man was coming back from the club mm. into another woman's house. Mm -hmm. Had it been probably um, they went to somewhere and they were running away, and they ended that house at that time. They will pick everybody up there. So these are issues. If you if you must live as a, a single lady, you have to also live like somebody who is who is responsible. You know that I even asked the guy. I said, sir, I'm very sorry. If you're the owner of this house and somebody entered this house by 2 a.m. and doesn't leave here, how will you feel? He said he will, he will feel bad. I said, but that's what he just did now. He said he's very sorry. And you, you see, sometimes they want to criticize all the, the landlord that he has done this, he has done that. For me, I, I, I never allow anybody to give me, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, agreement fee. If you want, if you don't want, fine. Because I always want to make it easy for people. If you ask for my tenant, they know. I don't. I don't collect any money to argue with tenancy uh, 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 this thing at all. Hmm. All right, Genesis. Thank you so much Thank for you. calling to uh, lend your voice to this matter. Nana, what do you say to what uh, Genesis has said? You know, I, I always find this line of argument interesting hmm. and equally disturbing because if we are being true to ourselves, the kind of Put to me that women are put to. Men are not put to that kind of scrutiny. So let I let even assume that it is true. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying let's work with the architect out and that it is true that women are always bringing boyfriends late in the night and all of that. Mm -hmm. Why isn't anybody constantly speaking to the men who are always bringing girlfriends? Why is it different for the women? I ask this same question to one of the real estate agents that I spoke to when he kept going on and on about him and bringing boyfriends and so on. So I was like, oh, you know how we see for men now? And so today, I don't know what that means. I'm still looking for how we see for men. Mm. This is what we call double standards. You are, if you notice in this the society, like, women are just generally expected to be perfect. Men are not held to the same level of perfection. Mm. Why should I be problem if the woman does it and the man does it? I'm not going to debate whether or not it is right or whether or not it is good to bring boyfriends because I personally believe people are free to do whatever they want as long as they're not harming anybody. So we need to start asking ourselves important, honest questions. Mm. Why are men or other people not subjected to this level of scrutiny? Mm. Okay. When we start being honest with ourselves, we will know that we are being unfair. Okay. Mm. Let's talk to Chooks. Hello, Chooks. Hello, Welcome. Sandra. Yes. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This one, where you bring today, now, <laughs> and a real life story. Eh, no. <laughs> First, let me tell you, the issue of the reason why landlords don't normally like uh, considering uh, single, single women mm. is only because, number one, you know, sometimes to talk to when issues arise, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you, you have to be very careful now uh, in dealing with the uh, ladies with all the laws that really protect them, especially when it has to come to issue of uh, maybe defaulting on house rent or one right or the other, you know, there is, the people, some people believe that there is no way you can fight a woman. And uh, really, if you are not very careful and not learned and very, very uh, knowledgeable, mm. you may not be able to win in court. But having said that, I still say that uh, uh, there is no way uh, a woman should not be considered uh, as a single person. At least you should have uh, somebody like a beneficiary, like, like a benefactor that can guarantee her. The, the, know, does a man does a man have to have a benefactor that has to guarantee him? Uh, def definitely, man normally have. Mm -hmm. But I, but mostly because of this issue, you know, the way I would talk to a man, if, if issue arises, and sometimes he will quickly understand and pick it, 
you know, and it will not be that uh, this uh, the landlord wants to cheat me or whatever. He will not, you know, deploy into that situation. It's much more uh, prevalent than when it is ordinary single lady. The lady will say ah, it's only because of me. The second point I want to make mm. is that uh, there is a present issue we are uh, is on our hand now. A friend of mine that has stood in on behalf of somebody mm. to get an accommodation. Mm -hmm. Now, to get detached from this lady is a problem. He is almost ending up, you know, having a second wife. That is just the issue, you know, because the relationship, you know, continue like that into something else. So mm -hmm. those are the intricacies in all these uh, issues. Chooks, thanks for yeah. sharing your thoughts. The last person we'll talk to is Oladipo. Then Nana and I can continue our conversation. Oladipo, welcome. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, um, it's a very interesting topic you have, Sandra, and mm. um, I have a whole lot of personal experience with it. Okay. As a man, when I was going to get um, my recent apartment mm. now, mm -hmm. I wasn't married then. Okay. And, uh, you know, I faced a whole lot of things with different landlords and all of that. Okay. Two actually gave me so much issue. They also had this issue of a single guy. You bring in different people. Mm -hmm. If I want her to ask me, what am I? What do I need a three bedroom apartment for? Mm. And it was so irritating. But the funny thing is, the place I'm actually staying now. He also had that notion, and he even was like, "Where do I work?" I said, "I run my business." And he, you know, he was like, "No, he doesn't want." a business person or an entrepreneur because you cannot guarantee his house rent. And I like, mm -hmm. if you get someone working even in a bank, it mm -hmm. can be sacked in two months' time. Mm -hmm. How does it guarantee it? But for me, I can't guarantee you. And, you know, that was a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. But with this lady issue with housing, mm -hmm. it's very, very irritating. Mm -hmm. And personally, I'm married now because mm -hmm. I was about getting married. That was why I wanted a bigger apartment a okay. in a more sane environment. Okay. And as it stands today, any meeting or when it comes to all this decision in the house and mm -hmm. all of that, mm -hmm. my wife handles it. Okay. The first time she was going to do it, one of the neighbors said, go and call your husband. And I heard from downstairs <laughs> and from upstairs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my wife said, I'm here. So... I'm standing in for myself and my husband. And he said, no, there is men that are meeting. And from up, I told him, I said, my wife is representing me. And anything she says there is binding on both of us. Okay. The reason I wanted to pass that across is people should understand that just as the man can make decision in the home, the woman can make decision. And mm -hmm. the earlier we started giving women those opportunities to make such decisions. Women manage the home better. In fact, in the real sense, women are the owners of the home. So if they are the owners of the home, they should determine affairs in the house. I think it is just insecurity of landlords that begin to say single women should not... Um, own apartments and all of that. For yeah, Christ but, 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 what say, but what do you say to Genesis, who is a landlord, who said that a, a, a young man came to his apartment at 2 a.m. and was banging on the door to come and see his girlfriend. And that was where I was actually there. going. Let's yes. face the fact I'm a guy. Mm. And part of the reasons I was leaving where I was staying before mm -hmm. was because there were a lot of distractions there when I was going to get married. Okay. Let's face the fact men even come home with more ladies than man, than ladies go mm. home to with with men. Mm -hmm. More ladies come to look for single guys at home than single than men going to look for single ladies at home. Mm -hmm. So uh, what Jen, I I respect his view mm -hmm. and his opinion, mm -hmm. most especially because he even used this airtime to call. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry to say I don't buy his line of thoughts. Okay. All right. Well, thank, you. thank you so much for calling to contribute to the show. Now, Nana, um, you have uh, landlords who defend this policy. They say what uh, Genesis said, or they say that women tend to invite other single women to squat with them, like you found when you were uh, doing your research for the article that you wrote. And um, they say that you end up with several women in an overcrowded flat. How common is this, do you think? 
I think how common it is, mm. or how common it is not, mm. is not the problem here, to be honest. Okay. The problem is that a lot of people do this thing, because we have men who also bring women. But the scrutiny is just on women. Mm. This is what I mean. Okay. I really don't want to, I don't, because I'm a believer or people do what they want, not making excuses for those who bring um, people that have not paid rent into their house. Mm. But I'm just a believer of, of coming to um, what we say, if we are really, really against our payment, bringing people to the house, if that is the core of the problem, mm. why is it not the same for the male parents? It tells me that, it tells me that that's not really what is, you know, wrong with these people. That's not the problem. Okay. Because if that was the problem, they would address it on this path. You see what I mean? Okay. So if you really care about women bringing um, their friends to the house, why do you say they apply to women? Mm. Or, or what, what, what do you see there? Now, in terms of people coming into the house, you know, it's, it's actually unfair. Because especially when they have because they haven't paid rent. But again, let us ask ourselves important questions. Let us tell ourselves the truth. Let us be honest about what we're doing wrong with us. Do we just not like women to own their places? Are we just um, discriminating against women? Or is it really that we don't want to stay in the house? And, and, I think the answer is on here. Yeah, and to be, be very, to, be, to be very fair, while it may be common to have uh, you know, women uh, come and squat with their girlfriend that has a house it's probably common among young people in general regardless of gender mm. you know there's a general employment shortage and a general housing uh, deficit these things affect both men and women we all know young men in their 20s who are squatting with their friends it's always strange to me when i hear somebody talk about squatting as if women are the only ones doing it and again we have to ask the question what is the percentage of single women that are squatting or allow people to squat with them it sounds like another one of uh, one of those things that are exaggerated just to make a point now i have to ask you some landlords uh, say that uh, they don't rent to single women because they often do not have long-term assured incomes the idea is that they are usually dependent on a man or their parents mm -hmm. and you know uh, or, you know for for rent and for upkeep mm -hmm. what do you think about this reason for not renting you know this is, is, is again is again discriminatory it's why they try to be the assumption that a woman cannot take care of herself on her own. Mm. There's one thing that if she bring there, there must be a man there. Mm. If she has a car, it must be a man. Mm. If she, she finds her every day, it must be a man. If she can afford, God forbid, she can afford two years rent, mm. it has to be a man. Mm. It's the idea, the way our society has been constructed that the man has to be the person to do everything for a woman. So people are just unable to adjust their purposes to accommodate the fact that women can actually do things for themselves, women can work. That's why women have to take wedding rings. I talk to a woman who has been wearing a fake wedding ring now for three years, as I become my coach for her. She's not married, she doesn't even have a boyfriend, but she's been telling the landlord that it's her own dad that is staying for the house, mm. just so that she can stay. So they, they, I don't know, there's just this crazy perception that women cannot spend for themselves. And all of this thing leads back to how our society portrays women. Mm. Again, they don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't support the idea that women should be free. That is why when we see a woman who is looking for herself, who is driving a guitar, who is doing this for herself, mm. they, they automatically spend her. That's why you hear, you hear people, you know, say, oh, that's how we go to the top to this and that, mm. because she doesn't depend on a man. Mm. I think the reason is ridiculous. And, and to be fair, anybody who wants to rent a property either has proof of employment or they don't. If they have proof of employment, their marital status shouldn't matter because they can clearly pay the rent by themselves. If they don't have proof of employment, then it's probably a bad idea to rent to them. In both cases, knowing their marital status doesn't matter because if, if it is accurate in saying, uh, uh, you know, some landlords, if it's accurate when they say they don't rent to to women because they often do not have long-term assured incomes. Isn't that telling us that even the job market is also discriminating against single women? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
The job is in Nigeria, everything discriminates against women. Let, let, okay, let's think about it. Is there any sector that doesn't discriminate against women? Women are paid less for doing the same job as men. This is not me saying this. This is something that is backed by facts. Women, women are not allowed to have houses on their own. Women are dragged on social media for expressing themselves. Women are just, let's think about any sphere of life. Hmm. Women are discriminated. In the tech industry, women are discriminated. What industry are women not discriminated? We need it. So it's, I think it's just a general problem of discrimination against women that has seen into this issue of land and rent. It's, 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 of course, it's a much bigger problem than just rent. It is just a, I always say that it is a portrayal or a depiction of how the society sees women. And now I'm just from the angle of, of, of rent. Yeah, but but Nana, why isn't my proof of employment or proof of business enough to show the landlord I will be able to pay rent next year? Why isn't it enough? I think there's an album that that the landlord actually cares about the truth of the tenant. The landlord doesn't. The landlord doesn't care. The landlord is focused on that. The thing you need now, you can afford it. This girl that I talked to in the article. She had everything, proof of employment, she was even ready to pay for more than two years. The lot of no, I can't do the same job that her parents had to come mm. all the way from the mm-hmm. So if it was about proof of employment or if it was about being able to accept the house, mm-hmm. wouldn't that be enough? I think it's a much, much bigger problem. Now, I'm not saying all landlords do this. Yes, of course. But I'm just saying the number of landlords who do is enough to make it a problem. Does Nigeria have laws protecting would-be tenants from this type of discrimination? Because I didn't find a law. I saw various online articles saying that there's no mm. law, but I don't know. Do you, do you know well, so, if Nigeria has a law? So Nigeria has laws that generally, like the constitution generally states that nobody should be discriminated based on their agenda, um, the, um, their religious beliefs and so on. So, Naturally, the fact that it says nobody should be discriminated based on their agenda should cover this. But of course, we as Nigerians, we know that what the law says, I mean, the law can say one thing, but is it actually being implemented or applied in reality? Mm-hmm. Now, part of what would have protected Nigerian women from this would have been the Equal Opportunities Bill. Um, I don't know if you remember, but that bill has been falling mm-hmm. in the National Assembly since mm-hmm. 2011 now. Mm-hmm. In fact, way before then. So, this bill is supposed to guarantee employment for women, equal opportunities in all phases of life, but it's still falling. Mm. We also have laws protecting women. That's why now women um, on paper can supposedly buy land mm. and own their land. But of course, we know that in reality, this is not true. So I think Nigeria's problem is not a lack of law mm. or the absence of bills. Mm. We have too many. It is actually implementing those things that is the problem. So yes, Laws exist to protect women, mm. but they are just not this effective. Uh, so, what can a tenant facing discrimination do? What agency can they report to? If if they can go to court, but we all know that that is the only. <laughs> My drug legal system. I was discussing this, you know, uh, not long ago with a friend who's a lawyer. My drug legal system is tedious. And truly, they have been women who have actually won cases, but they know what they went through. And not only everybody has the time and money to pursue that. Mm. That's why, in the beginning, and that's why I keep saying that, it's a much bigger problem than the law, the law system or rent or whatever. Mm. It is just a problem of perception. Because what the law exists, they are born to report this thing they exist. Mm. But it's the perception of people. So women renting or owning houses doesn't change. Mm. They were not going to really do a, a lot and a, a lot with these laws or with women reporting. Do you see what I mean? Mm. So it's one thing to 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 report and to go to court, mm. but it's the larger percentage of the society still believe that you are this is not you are not entitled to renting house because you're a single woman. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot bigger problem. Mm. So until that mindset changes, that thought process. We're really, really going to be in this and we're going to continue struggling. Mm. Nana Suleiman, thank you so much for talking to us on the glass ceiling on hard facts. Nana Suleiman is a journalist. Nana, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Let me talk to you who's listening at home. Are you a woman who has experienced um, this discrimination while looking for a place to stay? 
Has a landlord or an agent ever told you, Omo, you know, get this household because you never marry? Have you ever pretended to be married to look for house? Are you a man who has had to help a woman get a house by posing as her husband? Are you a real estate agent? I want to hear from you. Do you hear landlords and landladies say, Omo, we don't want a single woman, no. We don't want single women. What are the reasons they give? How common is it in your experience? Are you a landlord or a landlady? Do you have a no single women rule? Why do you have it? And if you don't have it, why don't you have it? Are there experiences that you had that led you to this policy? Again, not here to condemn you. I just want to understand. I just want to have a dialogue. Chris is in Ogombo. Hello, Chris. Welcome. Yeah, Sandra, how are you? I'm very well. Let me disagree with you for the first time today. <laughs> okay, that's fine. The topic you raise is quite apt, but mm. fundamentally, the issues are those peculiar Nigerian problems. Okay. As a, as a, as, as a people, we are not catching up with superior thinking. Okay. You see, there is risk of individual, risk assessment of every individual. Hmm. If I'm coming to you for whatever, you don't just pick me because I'm coming as a human being. Okay. What is the risk of dealing with Chris? What are the things that Chris is exposed to? Because if you don't consider that, you are going to have problem with your investment. Okay. That's why I say we, we shouldn't try to create an institutional problem when there is not. You see, business is generally... Nobody do business with you without knowing what is the risk that you represent. Even in marriage, in considering to get married to a man or a woman, why do we say courtship? What are the inherent things in courtship? It does not afford you the opportunity of knowing more about the person. Whether you can go ahead and say, yes, we can live together or not. We shouldn't generalize it like that. Otherwise, we end up creating problems. Okay. That so, so when you when you assess Chris, when you assess a woman who has a job and proves that she can pay her rent, what are the other risk factors that makes you not rent to her? In assessing Sandra, hmm. there are risk. I have to there are what we call risk acceptance criteria. I will sit down and analyze my subject matter. Okay. I will pick job. What kind of job? And what is his or her behavior in the workplace that is susceptible to default? I will consider that. Do you subject Someone your mentioned... male tenants to the same scrutiny? No, hang on. Exactly. I've got to have my template to scrutinize all my tenants that okay. come in. It doesn't matter whether a man or a woman. Okay. In a developed country, it's the same thing that applies. Nobody just knock on your door or see an ad that book. Uh, this place is vacant. Of course, you have the right to come in, but they are going to scrutinize you. You are going to put down information about yourself, and they will analyze this information. Actually, no. In other climes, if you come in and look at a house and you like it, the realtor just signs papers with you. If you cannot pay for the house, you're kicked out. They have processes that ensure that you can't, you can't stay in the house if you cannot pay. Nobody's discriminating because you are male or female or single or married. That's what I'm saying. That's the point I'm raising. There is nothing up there that says, look, my refusal is premised on discrimination because of sex. For you. But for no, a lot of other landlords, it is actually because of gender. They didn't say that. It is still within the... No, office. no. Actually, some so, landlords actually outrightly say, I will no. not rent to a single yeah, woman. Sandra, Sandra, I'm a risk analyst. You don't... When you talk of risk, it's, risk is not just one. I got to assemble the risks that is connected to this subject matter I'm going to have to take decision about. And I will, I will weigh them. That's where we have credit scoring. I'm, that may be, Chris, you're a risk analyst, that's fine. But I'm telling you that research has proven that some renters, landlords, agents will tell the you up front that because you're single, they will not rent to you. No, the research is weak. If the research content is not comprehensive, not robust enough, you ended up getting shallow response. I see. And it's not good enough to place that as the outcome to be able to make a very, you know, uh, you know, 
concrete judgment or something that will stand the test of time. All right, Chris. It's more reliable. Let me talk to Elizabeth. She's in Yaba. Elizabeth, welcome. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Welcome. Well, I, that guy that just spoke now, I don't know. But has he ever had a sister that called and telling me, please come and stand for you? Because I had to call people, someone close to me to come and beg my landlord before he allowed me to stay in the apartment I was staying before. Like, mm. he was like, is it that you're married? Like, he's the man. He wants to be with man, man to man. So he can't deal with the lady. He can't come and start telling him to pay his, pay his bills. I have to bring in someone standing and say, okay, fine. I'm the brother. At the point, I doesn't want the brother. I have to bring my dad in. Okay, yes, she's my daughter. So the house had to be in his own name. So the house was in his name, and I was the one living there. So whenever I want to pay rent, it will have to be from him, like from his own account, because he doesn't want to have anything to do with me. He doesn't want to discuss anything with me. I get to get information from my own dad when I'm the one paying my bills, because he doesn't want uh, a female in his apartment or a single lady. And I have to put... Um, an agreement with him that I won't, I won't bring a, any man. Like I only introduce him to one man, which would be my boyfriend, and I'm not going to bring him but, any but, man. But but how is it his business, Elizabeth? That's what I don't understand. Whenever I hear this point, my first instinct is to ask, why is it your landlord's business who visits you? As, as long as somebody is not breaking the law, they have the same rights to privacy in a rented house as they do in a house they own. Why is it your landlord's business? That was the question I actually asked. And it was like, no, he had that experience with them and they turned the house to a motel. They bring different guys, they smoke. And I, do, I told him that, that. I male also do that. Presently, where I stay is a three-story building. The guys on the third floor, presently, they smoke, they do shit, and he couldn't send them out. And you'll be like, Mr. Man, these people are disturbing us. Then, eh, what will I do? They are man, they will change. <laughs> but when I was coming in, you did give me that privilege. Uh, 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 well, uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much for call, calling to share your personal experience. I want more women to call, and we have a line specially for you 01277 0993. Ezadoom, sorry for keeping you waiting. Ah, uh, Ezadoom has gone away from that line. Because I have to mention it again for you who's just joined us. We're talking about a discrimination that single women face. As regards something that everybody has to do at some point in their life. And that's getting an accommodation. So why does a landlord say to a prospective tenant, I want to meet only one man. And that's the only man allowed to visit you. Oh my God. As long as somebody is not breaking the law, do they not have a right to privacy? Remember that she's not staying in your house for free. Oh. She paid for the right to live there. Living in a place as the main occupant means that you shouldn't need anybody's permission to entertain guests. Except it's an estate where they have a time they lock the gate. Even if a woman has three men visiting her every day, is it the landlady's business? Is it? But see, wait, let's even pretend that it is the landlady's business. Let's pretend that it, it is the landlady's business. It leads me to ask, does your tenant having visitors damage your property in any way? Does your tenant having visitors damage your property in any way? Let's talk about the double standard. Single men live in a flat. Elizabeth just shared the story. And when single men live in these flats, it's called a bachelor's pad. And that term has a lot of connotations. There's the idea that a bachelor pad is a place for men to have fun. Ladies visit them constantly. You don't hear the landlord saying, I don't rent to single men because they'll have too many girls visiting them. And my flat will look like a brothel. No, single men... In their, bachelor pla in their bachelor pads, are mostly indulged. And their men, they will still change. So we can see how our gender bias is at work in this situation. Our society shames women for the exact same behavior it accepts from men. Especially when it comes to sex. And usually when women point this out, they're told, oh, it's not serious now. It's not that serious. Well, I hope we can see 
that it has a serious real-world consequence. Women are being denied a place to live because of this particular bias. Let's talk to Liberty. She's at Aja. Hello, Liberty. Hello. Welcome. Okay. Um, I'll get the phone to my other sister. She's in a better position to explain to you what we experience oh. in the house of the land. Oh, fantastic. Land. Fantastic. Give it to her, please. Hello, good evening. Good evening. What's your name, darling? My name is Treasure. Treasure, welcome. Yes, I won't talk about the experience I had in the house we were staying before we moved down to Aja here. Okay. Um, I was staying in a particular house where I, w- I had a fiance then. And the landlord had issues with the guy coming over to see me. And was like, why will, why will I bring the guy? What does he do? What does the guy do? It's not like I have different people. That, well, I told him this guy is my fiancé. Mm. He's been getting married and all that. Mm. The landlord said he doesn't want him to come see me. In a house that you were paying for? Yes. Was he and giving was you like, the house for free or were you paying for the house? I was paying for the house. <laughs> and before then, we never had issues until my fiancé started coming to see me and, you know, once in a while and stopped. Then another issue arose and my sister called and said she was going to come stay with me. Mm. I had to tell him my younger sister would be coming to stay with me before she came. Mm. The man bluntly said, no, my younger sister shouldn't come stay with me. Mm. That his house is meant for one person and one person only. I was like, are you serious? Did you sign that in the tenancy agreement? In the tenancy agreement, it says that if, like, if any information changes, you mm. let me know. That's mm. what it says. Okay. Which I went to tell him uh-huh. that before she comes, I have to tell you before my sister comes, she'll be coming to stay with me. Uh-huh. He said, no, she shouldn't come. I'm like, this person is not a friend. She's my blood sister. And I can't have a house in Lagos where she will now go around and be looking for other places to stay where her other sister has a house mm. she's living in. Mm. You know, even when I told my, my dad, I, I complained. My dad was like, if I was someone else, he would have thought I was lying. Ah. That How can your landlord say your sister should come stay with you? Mm-hmm. I was like, we, we had several issues. So they said the man locked my tab and stuff. We had issues with him because my sister came to see me. We had police issues, police case and stuff. I mean, this thing is just really, very really, very annoying. Why landlords, we have issues with single ladies staying in their houses. Mm. It's crazy. Thank it's you crazy. so much for sharing your story with us, Treasure. Liberty, thanks for calling. You guys should call us some more, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Bye. Man, are you people hearing what I'm are you people, are you people, are you people seeing what I'm saying? Are you people hearing what I'm hearing? Hey, hey, hey. Chidi from Ikoyi on WhatsApp says, that's not a good reason. All landlords should allow single women to rent on their own. How many men show their proof of income to landlords? We have this person that says, Sandra, it's a landlord's business. The building beside me was rented by two ladies, a two-bedroom f- flat. After some weeks, over 12 ladies are c- occupying that apartment. And you don't want the landlord to talk. We have the same thing happening with men. Do the landlords talk when it happens? Because I'm, my own is, don't say, oh, just women. If, if there are men doing the same thing, talk about that. If there are women doing the same thing, talk about that. Let that be a standard rule for everybody. Don't single the women out. The challenges single women face in getting up in an apartment, uh, getting an apartment boils down to cultural values placed on women. I could name them. Is it from picking a career, domestic assignment, job, and so on? And this is Alfred sending us a message. Alfred, thanks you, thank you for that message. Uh, more messages on WhatsApp here. Uh, this person is asking for jingle rates. I'm going to reply that message very, very soon. We've got more messages. Uh, this one says, Now, our wives, they make those rules. Women are actually their own worst enemies. Oh, a landlord sent me this and says, Our wives are the ones making the rules. No single women in the houses. And I want to ask, if you're a landlady, please call me. Tell me why. Why don't you want independent single women to be able to rent for themselves? James, welcome to the show. Uh, Sandra, good evening. Good evening. I've been calling, calling. I want to contribute to this topic. Uh, go ahead now. Uh-huh. I, will, I will make it short because I don't have strength, except if it is sport matters, if it is football matters. <laughs> I, have, I have enough strength. Oh, uh, Go ahead now. The, the reason why land, 
we should lock it against landlords and landladies. Okay. The reason why a tenant will later become a land landlord or landlady tomorrow. The reason why they are they are saying about, uh, saying all this and more mm. is because unmarried ladies mm. and unmarried they don't tomorrow now they will be bringing different people in the compound. That but, is that one is sure. Okay. And nobody, no landlord will accept that. Why? That why is it the landlord's part. business? No, is it the, no. If you have a house, you have rule and regulation. No, you don't. You've rented it out. Eh, but you don't want to rent it to somebody that is doing a shower now. Why? So a shower doesn't deserve to live in a house. It should go and look for go to a shower house. <laughs> Not uh, somebody. Yes, that is why they, some of them just go there. So you can do tomorrow now. If it is a man now, tomorrow it will be a different woman. Mm. So it's not good. Not only ladies, it's, mm. it's the both. Mm. So single so, people yes, don't no, deserve to live alone. They should live with their parents until they are married. Yes. Okay. So it's somebody that is not married is supposed to live with his parents till he's married. Until they are married. James, thank you for calling us. David is in a better. Hello, hello, James. Hello, David. Sorry. Yes, David. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, thank you. Hmm. Um, anyway, it's actually not only ladies that face this. Yes, yes, I know. Okay, so when I was 23, that was when I rented my first apartment. Okay. And when I was, when I met with the landlord, he told me frankly that he would only allow me in one because I had a good job. Okay. Then secondly, he gave me another condition that he doesn't want to see ladies around. And his own son was living in the same house who had so many female friends that come visit him. Mm. And I think after like two years, he told me that I should leave. Like I told him at a point, you cannot deprive me of my friends coming visiting me. Mm. You get So I also face the same thing. Mm. So I do not see any reason, whether male, whether female, mm. as long as they have the stuff, the means of funding their rent. Why should you deprive me? What concerns you with my privacy, with who visits me? Hmm. See, the house where I married into, mm -hmm. I had a, 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 a co-tenant, a male, okay. who was always coming in very late, who had so many friends visiting him, okay. who said that men don't do these things, that they are discriminating against the female, female gender. I think it, it's crazy. It's criminal, honestly. It is. I, I don't know what it. our governments are doing about it. Not in fact, we don't even have a government that cares about us. We shouldn't even go there. Thank you. Have a good day. David, you too. Thanks for calling me. John is in a cotton. John is the last call we'll take on the show. Hello, John. Hello, hello, Sandra. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to speak from the side of the FHA. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Okay. Uh, most times... Uh, all estate agents are out there actually to make money. Okay. So the, there is no estate agent that is going to discriminate against any woman. Okay. The truth of it is always like, you will work according to the instructions of the landlord. Okay. If the landlord says he doesn't want, there's no need taking a woman to his property when he says he doesn't want. Mm. Uh, the other thing I always talk about is like, I had one or two experiences of my own whereby we need to like get one of the persons to cover up for a lady. Mm -hmm. Apartment. Yeah. Traditional thing. We have this generation, the landlords are not young people. Mm. They are older generation. Mm -hmm. From the way young people do in. Mm -hmm. You have a landlord who maybe is a landlord who is just like has the house of his own and things like that. Mm. And he has a young wife. Mm. Uh, there is no way a younger lady was going to stay with the house in the house of the landlord. Mm. Because the wife will not probably uh, find it uh, comfortable having a, a young lady when she's too young with the husband. Mm. Then the other aspect of it is always like, most times when the issue comes, like, okay, let me say this. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, we seen that a customer has this. We had an incident where a lady actually died in the in this now apartment. Mm. Uh, it was very difficult getting together people. Then... The landlord was actually a land. It wasn't a landlord. It was a landlady that owned the house. Okay. The first thing the police did was they picked her up. They, they, she was locked up for like weeks. Wow. You know, before our people come, the landlady people came and to beg, to bail and things like that. When mm -hmm. when 
Unfortunately, the line is breaking up, John, so I'm going to have to let you go. But we got the gist of that. As an agent, you only have to work according to what the landlord or landlady wants. This is a conversation that needs to be had again. And so we're going to have it again. Maybe not next week, but we'll definitely talk about this matter again. I want to hear from more people. But up next, let's talk about the Lagos healthcare situation. I am Sandra Ezekwasili. If you just joined us and you missed the first couple of minutes, well, the first 58 minutes of the show. You can listen to our podcast at the end of today or by tomorrow morning. Our podcast will be up and you can listen and enjoy today's episode of The Glass Ceiling. Hard facts will be right back.